Oh my gosh, I thought I quit out. So we're live. All right, let me check the sound. You can tell that I've been having a lot of flare-ups because my head is just a big fog thing. And um, thank you. Thanks, Swanee. I haven't seen you in forever. I haven't seen a lot of people in forever. Yeah, I can't do these every week, I don't think, but um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep them up. I, I think when the kids do or don't go back to school, we're really going to need to. I miss you all day, starry-eyed swan. I miss you all day. That's what I tell everybody in my family. And that's what I tell my kitty cat. It doesn't matter. It could be a year. It could be an hour. I miss you all day. So uh, it's just one of our isms. But it's really nice to see you guys. Um, you know, I don't have it all together here today, as usual. <laughs> but what's really been on my heart lately, um, and I do think, and this isn't written in stone, but I, I think that I might want to do a Zoom or um, an e-course. Actually, Zooms are easier, and I haven't really done any except for with Betty. Um, but I think what I want to do is um, a course called High Energy Art for People Who Don't Have Any. What do you think? Because, or, or don't have any time, or don't have the unction, or are feeling depressed, or like myself, get these flare-ups where I can feel good for a while and I'm burning and I'm doing good. Um, and then, you know, I just get really, really dizzy and a lot of times I have to stay, you know, in a, in a reclined position more than a sitting up position. Um, and those are the days that you see me working in what I call my sacred sketchbook. So, um, I'm, I'm feeling as though uh, I can continue to work and to, to learn and to benefit in that downtime, but... Um, and then when I recover, which inevitably I do, and, and all of us do, it, just, it, it depends on when you recover, you know, a snippet of time to be able to work again, and you haven't for a while, and you go in the studio and say, ruh row, you know, if you work in a sketchbook or on small works or whatever, um, simple things, then you're you really are ready and not only are you ready but you're, you're almost ready to explode so usually what comes out is something really wonderful so i'm i'm calling it i think i think you know pat can change her mind a million times i have too many ideas um high energy art for people who have little or none or low or whatever, something like that. So I just want to be able to encourage you to continue to make art. We don't know what the fall is going to bring. Again, we talk about schools, our kids going back to school. We don't know. Um, there's forecasting, you know, storms. There's forecasting. There's still all this racial unrest. Um, a lot of us are still, um, we're not completely locked down here, but we're very limited. And as it starts to move toward the winter, and if COVID, you know, isn't stomped out and there's not a vaccine, then what's that going to look like again? You know, the restaurants, you could eat outside here, but then is it going to go back to the isolated streets and um, not being able to go to parks again? I mean, we were work walking in cemeteries because the parks were closed. There was no place to go outside. The beaches were closed. So I don't know what your your codes are in your part of the world. Um, and we don't really have numbers for our coding in terms of what you can and can't do. But, you know, I'd really like to develop something that's a little bit foolproof and sort of ahead of this curve, whatever it's gonna be. And then we've got the elections coming up. And, and again, I'm not political. I hear all my news from my husband or my kids. And <laughs> because I like looking at the good news, you know, head down, make my art, encourage other people, encourages me, um, and, uh, you know, keep, keep doing what we can do. So, um, 
And what I did want to share with you, I thought, uh, it, why don't you guys tell us, uh, most of you, where you're from? Because we all like to see that. Um, it's kind of neat when there's people from different places in the world. I don't know if this time slot is better for people in South Africa or Australia or worse or for California. I don't know. But, um, but I, I really believe with all my heart the people that are meant to be here are here. And, um, you know, if there's only one, uh, I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to share with you and I'm going to teach you like there's a thousand people watching because you deserve that. So, okay, there's Swanee from North Carolina. She used to be up here. In fact, she lived in Red Bank for a while. Uh, and then she was up in Maine and now she's down in South Carol North Carolina. Um, Prague, Czech Republic. Eve, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. So, um, what have you been up to? Are you making art? I see a lot of art. I see a lot of art. Um, happening on Instagram and it does my heart really good. I also see that uh, activity and sales and things like that are picking up, which is really good, you know? And uh, I remember growing up as a little girl and they said, you know, even during the depression, people would go to the movies, you know, people want to see beauty. So I, I, I believe that art um, is a necessity, you know, how we have essential workers and they are putting their lives on the line. And we're not necessarily putting our lives on the line, but by keeping doing what we're doing and not falling into despair and depression of the isolation and, and just the, you know, what we can't do, or I want my old life back, you know, forget it. <laughs> you know, for now, you know, forget that. That's not helpful. You know, let's just keep moving along. But I do believe that art is an essential service to humanity um you know we look back on hieroglyphics and that told us about the egyptian empire uh that showed told us about you know ancient civilizations of all types um you know we look at art from the 60s from andy warhol and from um biscott and um you know, even influenced the Beatles with Rubber Soul. And then you go to the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, then there's David Bowie really hit it big and everything was androgynous, you know. And, um, but it, it, it parallels what's going on. And I think it's really, really important for us to keep telling the story and to keep putting beauty out there in the midst of so many things that just look, ratty you know um you know prayers for people hold up in portland um doesn't look good looks like chaos looks like people are eating each other it's not good it's not good you know elections coming up we're not each other's enemies um you know this is the united states of america and you know you gotta vote your conscience and I got to vote mine. And do I think that there's a perfect candidate? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> no. But you got to, you got to, it boils down to vote in your conscience at that point. Do I expect the president or a political party to save the world? No. You know, uh, I'm a woman of faith and I think that this is all in God's hands. And that's what gives me peace and comfort because I don't think it's in the ability of a group of human beings that can be biased, that just like us have faulty filters and faulty experiences to be able to, hello Roxanne, hello Hat Creek, I love your work. I love what you do, I love what you stand for. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think anyone is gonna, gonna save the world 
uh, with me, I would say, that's going to be Jesus. <laughs> so come back, Jesus. So um, I want to, um, I guess, share my sketchbook a little bit with you if you'd be interested to see it. Um, the thing about my sketchbook that, that I make such a big deal about is that that's really how I started on Instagram. A lot of you have heard my story. Um, there, there's many new followers. And so um, um, you may have um, not heard it, but I, I got on Instagram um, because I had been doing shows and teaching art and I was out there. But then I got Meniere's disease, which I had had from a long time, but it got very, very reactive. A lot of vertigo episodes and, and all kinds of other side effects, which I couldn't get out. So a student came to me and she said, you know, Pat, this is Instagram, download it, just paint and post. And so I, I did that. And the stuff that I was doing, um, I actually at the time didn't know about paint markers. Um, but, you know, my husband took me to the art supply store and I found some paint markers. And back there, they were just like deco markers and things like that. But I just started to to draw with the paint markers in my lap in a sketchbook and um, and talk to other artists. And that's what I needed. And that's what we need now, you know? It's not just what does everybody think about your art, you know? That's, that's good and that's also damaging. But it's really good to look at other people's work and not say, oh, I wish I could paint like them. Um, but just to know that there's only one you. You know, um, there's nobody like you. And if you haven't found your voice yet, um, it's just a matter of time. And you'll find your voice if you keep painting like you, even if you think you paint horribly. You know, we're our own worst critics, okay? But it's really that time. And so with me, I was safe in my sketchbook. You know, if I, if I, I did something that I, I thought was pretty cool, I wanted to share, I shared it. Um, if not, I didn't, but I was always exploring. What can I do with a blue marker? You know, then I would get a couple more markers, and then I would use a little bit of gesso with that, and little by little, um, people kind of liked it, and they started following. And um, I don't have any magic bullet plan. Um, but somehow, um, in communicating back and forth with you guys um, and building relationships, because I am relational, um, I, I, th th this following just grew and grew and grew. And, and I'm very humble uh, about it because um, I, I just feel that it's just something so beyond me. But... Um, yeah, I'm feeling okay. You know, I'm, I'm here and, and, and I, I do pretty good with it. A lot of people would be all wussed up, you know, but uh, anybody who has like a chronic illness and I mean, I was like, you know, crazy, totally healthy for so many years. It took me such a long time to learn how to slow down. Um, but, um, you know, I'm now going through like this um, immunotherapy where I got to get shots every week. You know, when they're going, oh, does that hurt? And I'm going, it's not childbirth. You know, <laughs> this is nothing, you know. But anyway, uh, so my it was really with my sketching in my lap. And then people like starting to get in contact with me. Like, do you sell that? And I was like, well, I don't know. You know, like how to tear it out of here and stuff. So I figured out a way to do that and then they just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then you know it's like okay how do you use paypal how do you do the next thing how do you ship stuff and um yes maris marisco i want to do um some live zoom classes because um I don't necessarily love having to write letters and I, I don't mind writing, but writing letters to say, you know, look at my courses, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'd like to be able to talk to you person to person. That's really the kind of teacher that I developed as. And um, I, there's always something that goes unsaid. 
And so I like the opportunity to be able to, to teach live and maybe do two hours. I think we could really get a lot done in two hours and then see how they go because maybe we can, we can do segments, you know, whether it's learning about color um, or what have you. I have too many ideas and too little time. So, um, anyway, I'm going to kind of go through my, um, oh, Marissa. Okay. It, you know, it's hard to tell because we all, um, have to play around with our IG handles in case somebody else has that name. So, so I know what you mean. Um, but you got to add a little underscore or something. Um, there's Maury. Hi, Maury. You're almost going to be a dad. Congratulations. Give Breezy my love. Yeah. I just love the fact that we can communicate from all over the world. I really do. And um, a lot of people, when they watch my Store Crazy Cafe, <laughs> think I talk too much, which I do. So... But don't watch it, you know? I mean, I, I think we need to talk. I know I do. And, um, you know, if I'm teaching, I'm teaching. But this is social. This is true social media. You know, I'm here to chat with you, talk about some real stuff, try to go first with what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and being transparent so that maybe I can give somebody else courage. You know, to just be who you are, do what you do. And uh, like I said, in terms of any kind of teaching that I do, um, I'm never teaching anybody how to paint like me. Um, I, I'm not worried about people painting like me. I, I worry about people relying on me and not being able to paint when I'm not around. And so I'd rather teach you like really core principles that can strengthen you and that you can go on and not need Pat forever. You know, I'm not trying to create uh, dependent painters. I'm trying to create, give you all my secrets. I don't hold anything back um, and tell you uh, what you need to know about color, what you need to know about design, what you need to know about space division. And all this stuff seems kind of, you know, hard. It's not hard but it is gonna require you thinking, you making decisions, and you taking authority over your work and giving yourself permission to try, to succeed, to try and fail and to learn. And that's really, hi Breezy. Um, that's, I believe, that that is my job as a teacher to cause you to learn and to become independent painters and we're all different you know i used to say to my students if i if i uh, teach you and and you study with me and they would come back you know until they really felt like they they had this uh, or come and go i'm happy with that um I always just say, if you end up painting like me, better than me, but it's funny because all artists are different, so there's no better than, but better than me, then I've done my job, right? I mean, if I'm a voice coach and I can have a beautiful voice, but you know, there's enough to go around, but what I want you to do is be your best you. Uh, you can mimic me, that's easy. You know, you can look at what I do and you can mimic it and you can, uh, you can learn from that. I mean, I used to, to like mimic the masters and stuff. Uh, but at a certain point, you don't know how to make decisions because when you are mimicking another person's artwork, um, you know, they've done the problem solving. And um, so, you, you know, you, you know what colors to use, you know, uh, what, what kind of shapes to use and what kind of, you know, how to organize the space um, or how to make a certain flower and balance it off with something else. So, all of that thinking has been done. So yes, you can learn to use your paint and you can learn to, to see what colors go together and things like that. But at some point, um, again, it's time to make a departure 
And when you make the departure, you're, not, you're gonna think you don't know how to paint. <laughs> and because you're not gonna know how to solve the problem. And so that's the niche that I think, I, I believe needs to be filled. And I needed to have that because I would go around and take some workshops too and it was really cool. But then I had to work a lot alone. And so that's really, really important to put the work in. Hello, Ellie from France, Ellie Egyptian. Eli, or is it Ellie? Hello. So anyway, in talking about, you've been seeing my sketchbook pop up. And what I've also done is a lot of people are saying, do you sell those? And I can't really sell that. Um, but what I've been doing is from what I've been learning uh, about color um, play, I'm trying to put on the 12 by 12 boards in between uh, my sketchbook work when I'm not really top of the morning and uh, make those available. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of turned out fine, you know? Uh, sometimes necessity is the mother of invention and so it's turned out okay so um, what I want to do is I guess I'll, I'll kind of show you my sketchbook I'll turn it around and I kind of go through it and let me be mindful of time um, would you like to see it I can turn this down give me some hearts let me know um, nothing <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm going to show it to two people. All right, that's two. Okay, that was a couple. Oh, yes, okay, cool. All right, you know, I'm gonna go through it. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about some, answer some questions that people have been asking me, all right, about my sketchbook and yada, yada, yada. You can use all kinds. There's lots to talk about. That's why I want to do a Zoom, because I cannot say everything like this. All right. All right. Hi, Mama. Progress Mama. You're changing your name. I know who you are. I know where you live. All right. Let me see if I can get down here and you can see this. Hmm. I haven't worked up here in a while. Hmm. Okay. Can you guys see that? I got to bend down to see if you can see that. Okay. I think you can see that. All right, so let me see which way I am. Everything is backwards. Which way is up? Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the sketchbook itself. Um, and I'm not trying to sell you this sketchbook because it's honestly not my favorite sketchbook. It's really cool, it's very classy, it's Italian, and um, it's leather, and it has a little thingy here. Um, and it has this band, which is good. Look how much I have to go in it, though. I mean, wow. Um, it's called the Chiak, C-I-A-K sketchbook. And I can't tell you exactly where to get it because since COVID, a lot of the companies uh, shut down. So if you Google it, you possibly will find a company that sells this particular sketchbook. I bought two of them a while back. The other one is pink. So, um, you know, uh, what did I write there? These are notes to me. Exploration is a form of gratitude. So, you know, I, I, I'm grateful. There it is, Chiak. You see that? I don't know if you see that. But anyway, okay, so I kind of went crazy. This I backed up to do because I started doing this thing. I wanted to do a whole book of uh, green and yellow and black, and I soon went nuts and painted over all of it because I thought I'll go berserk if I have to stay on that same thing for a long time. I, I gesso the pages first, okay, because this paper, all right, this is what I don't love about it. It's a little bit thin for my taste, okay? I mean, I, uh, and it does stick together. Like everybody says, how do you keep it from sticking together? Um, what I do is I gesso the pages and I gesso them with a heavy duty gesso so that uh, the, the smooth gesso still uh, it, it causes them to stick, all right? 
So I'll just kind of go and whip through. I skip, all right, I skip because I don't want to paint on the back of it. it, it the, the paper can't take it, um, so I skip. This is how the whole thing started. So we'll just go past this because I was just doing, you know, uh, minimal to complicated and then I was like no 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 that I don't want to commit that long to that so you know you got to figure out in your sketchbook what you can stay with if you want to or you just do something different every day so mine just became like color exploration which is not a big surprise for me because I love color so and I would try to just uh, do limited palettes but see how much color I could get from a limited palette. Can you guys see this? Um, and uh, so, you know, sometimes I work on this stuff on my lap while I'm watching television with my hubs. Um, but I have a little cart next to my couch and I have a few colors of paint in it and some water. And it's really funny because he sits on the right side of the couch and I sit on the left, but I'm right-handed. So I have to to reach over, but it, it works. Okay, are we in camera? All right, let's just go. I like this combination. This was interesting. I, I'm pretty sure it was just um, yellow, purple, black, and white. And you can get all these colors. It's, it's wild. This one I kind of stayed, what you call analogous, on the same side of this color wheel, like all warm. That's a good way to go if, if, you're, if you're, you know, getting, you know, uh, messy with your color, if you're getting lost. You know, go, you know, go for maybe all warm tones and then pop in a few darks or one or two cool things at the end. Okay, skipping. So now this one, it's not perfect. I skipped too many. Then I kind of said, well, let me see what I can do with my blues, a variety of blues, and then take like something like a brown that I never want to use and see what happens if I add, mix them together and it would make stuff like that. Isn't that pretty? Like I can, I could buy that blue, but I don't have to. And then if I add white to that, then I'm getting that really nice pale uh, color, I don't know, light olive green that you pay for. Um, and then this one, I just went for broke. And because it was so crazy, I ended up obliterating. So the way I ended up pulling this one together is I just went over with a neutral color and kind of trapped these things here. That's kind of what Mandy does. I don't know if you know Mandy. She does the wild stuff and she traps it in bright colors and what have you so she kind of that that's the way she does she works she works really works out her negative space and then this one i just thought well let me try to you know take out all my different blues but then i added like um i think this is like a nickel azo gold um because if you have white to that you can get a good yellow and stuff but um, I wanted to kind of stay with my blues, but then it looked kind of dreamy, so I kind of took it outside and, and did a little spray paint. Um, but I, I quickly found that that could cover up my whole, um, are we in camera? My whole page, so um, I, I haven't done it again, but I will do it. I learned something there that I can do that on a bigger piece and it softens my edges. So it's all learning, you know? This is fun. You've been seeing more of this kind of palette because I'm really kind of liking putting a, a variety of blues together with, um, this isn't necessarily an orange. This is a iron oxide red. And there might be some yellow mixed in. I forget. And then I add some of my marks on top or not. Because the whole thing is about color. This one was absolutely crazy. Um, you know, it was like everything all in one. Uh, big hash, hard to resolve, but I think worth it. But you can really get uh, messed up if you go for something like this real easy. 
So this, again, this is a simple palette. This is just a, a red, a crimson red, um, uh, raw sienna, okay, which I, I, I don't use because it's kind of like a muddy color, and then black and white. Right? And if I add like this, this raw sienna to this black, I can get like this cool green and stuff. So, you know, simplifying your palette can really take you a long way. But I would love to teach you this stuff in a Zoom class, all right? And then I wanted to go over some really hot colors, you know, hot town, summer in the city kind of stuff. Same thing, different day. Same colors per se, but just like bright forms of them. Still limited palette. And this one I really like. This one, it, it, it's not a showstopper for a, a lot of people. I don't really, you know, it, it, likes don't necessarily mean that uh, it's more deserving or not. It's just, you know, you got masses and, and you have to, you know, know in your heart what, uh, what really is um, something that was a breakthrough for you. And some of these colors that I got with this palette uh, were things that I never found before. So this, this piece was very, very meaningful to me. Um, and they all are, they all are, because I just do these explorations. So it's not so much about the design, although the design comes out because I teach it and I work it, um, but I, it's always about the color. It, all my art, it, it's always about color first. Um, and I don't always have my palette planned before I start. No, I, you know, if I just want to start with turquoise, I'll start with turquoise and I'll respond to that. Then I was, you know, going with these hot colors and, um, oh my gosh, everybody loves these hot colors. You know, you put some hot colors and stuff and, you know, you're going to get a thousand followers. I'm telling you. Just kidding. And so then I wanted to do something totally soft. So I put, added a lot of white to my colors and that made it soft and I didn't put any black in this one at all. And this was the last one that I did. So now I'm ready to roll into another one. I'll skip a page and then I'll end up gessoing that page, these, and I'll start painting on them, okay? Does that make sense? Does that stuff make sense? Hi, Pamela Bates. Yeah, I love, I, I, you know, I love the muted palettes. I love them all. It's hard to uh, not to, uh, I just have to explore. And that's why I like the sketchbook because I just do them all. <laughs> I mean, I just, just do them all. And then find out what I, I don't really know what my home base is. I, I kind of stick with something for a while. Um, if I had the right kind of gesso up here, what time is it? I could start this and show you guys, but I have to walk away for a minute and get my gesso because I don't have anybody to help me here. So do you want me to sort of start something and show you what I do to, to work here? Um, hi, Gwen, I haven't seen you in forever. How'd you fare in the storm? All right, I'll be right back. Yeah, and this particular studio is a hot mess because it's like I'm saying, we've been cleaning out and then um, somebody wants to be live on here. You gotta, I gotta really know that. Sometimes you guys press the button. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a clip 
and I'm gonna clip my sides. It's hard not to get it on your other paper. It's not a perfect process. It's your sketchbook and um, you're gonna learn a lot about a lot of things, including you know things like what kind of gesso is gonna work when. But the best way to learn that is to, to make mistakes. And um, okay, so you know this is like your basic gesso, okay, Liquitex gesso. It's a great gesso, all right? But what I found, and I was going back and forth, is that when I used this in my sketchbook, because you close it on top of other paper, um, it, it, even with the paint on top of it, it was sticking. Even if I sprayed it, okay, with a fixative and like a matte finish varnish, um, it still was sticking. So then it was like, hmm, what, uh, what is the deal? And I said, let me go back and take a look at these other ones that I had started with this gesso, which I think I, I wasn't planning on using because it's just so thick, you know? Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is Blick and it's just um, heavy duty white gesso. You can get it in any brand, but it's thick like paste. And uh, for some reason, it leaves it more a toothy uh, finish to it. And um, that is very, very helpful. You should never use a brush like this to put your gesso on at home, <laughs> but I'm going to now. All right, so, I mean, it's not a thrill a minute, but um, okay, 105 degrees. You had excited to do some journal work, recovering from a hysterectomy and can't do my regular life. Yeah, she does some large paintings. Check out Gwen Mihog. I don't know if I'm saying your, your name correctly. Um, but she does some really cool big stuff and, um, wow, that's no small thing. So, uh, I'll be praying for you, Gwen. Okay. Um, it's good to know, but okay, here we go. Um, okay. I think you can see that. Let me turn this away for a second so I can look at you. All right. So I'm only gonna get a little bit of water on my brush because I don't really wanna wet these pages because they really can't take water. I really like uh, the Strathmore watercolor, um, uh, the Strathmore, the Strathmore journals that will be watercolor paper or mixed media paper. This is, you know, a journal that is really good for, um, I think collage would be fine on here. It's good for um, writing. You know, it may have been, you know, kind of a writer and a light, a light watercolor sketchers um, type of journal. Um, making Me, who does a lot of the journal work, um, uses these journals and, and I love her work. And so I remember when she was talking about what she used, she talked about these. So I was like, well, I gotta go get one of those. So I did. And um, and like I showed you the cool parts about it, and, and they are cool. But um, you know, if you're really hard on the paper, um, then you know, I just had to figure out how can I how can I the way I paint use it. You might end up using it differently. I mean, if you use dry media on here, if you say you want to do this with a sketchbook full of crayon stuff, you don't have to gesso it, all right? And generally, I don't believe that you have to gesso every uh, piece that you paint with, um, every paper piece that you paint with. And I do not do that. I like paper and I started as a watercolorist, so I, I like to let the paper do what it does. But um, the, the pros for that is that the paint will sit on top. But if I wanna do a combination of watercolor and I wanna do a little bit of, um, of acrylic paint and draw on it, then I, I don't really wanna mess with my paper because I don't really love watercolor on top of gessoed 
um, paper. But that's, that's just me. And that's also the beauty of working in a sketchbook because you have to work it and, and design it really and problem solve uh, to suit the way you paint. You know, if you're a light painter and stuff like that, you might not need to do any of that. But you might want to, you know, double your pages to make them a little bit stiffer if you get this one. If you get the Strathmore ones, you don't have to do that. Also, uh, Arteza makes a good one. And um, those, are, those pages can take a lot too. They don't have to be gessoed. You can gesso them. That's fun. You can, you know, experiment with it but that paper is designed to take um, mixed media and watercolor. So um, I, and they're, and they're, this is like a $40 um, score and, and it's not necessary unless you just like it to be, you know, a, a special kind of package. Um, But the other ones, I'm telling you, they really, really, uh, they have, they have these kind of thingies. They have a band to hold it closed, and um, and the price is right. You get two for like the price of another one sketchbook. So uh, if you want to start, you know, doing, and they have all different shapes. See, sometimes I wanna, I wanna do. Um, this is the first one that I've done across a spread. But sometimes I want to, I'll do that for a while, but then maybe I want to work in a square for a while. So uh, I want to be able to get a square sketchbook. So some of those companies have uh, a variety of shapes and things too, which I think is pretty neat. So it kind of needs to dry ideally, but um, you know, I might dive in and work. I know I came on late, so I think I have about 15 minutes if you do. So um, let's see, I'm gonna use what I was using the other day. This is the Chinese food container. Um, I use these sometimes, especially when I'm watching television because I, I don't wanna get it all over the place. So I'll put them in these Chinese food containers and I'll close it up. And usually they'll, they'll last overnight. Let me see, yeah, that's still wet, okay? That's wet, that's wet. Okay, now I think pretty sure that black is wet. So the last one I did, I did, and, and, and I guess this is what I'll, I'll show you. I did it and I made the whole thing light. So maybe I wanna use the same colors. This is just the way I think, all right? You know, I, you gotta play games with yourself and decide what you wanna learn because you can really teach yourself a lot. All right, um, but you just have to be willing to explore. So this has the gesso on it, so I might not start with that one because it's already gonna get pretty white because the white's gonna come up. So, but um, I wanna make sure I'm not working upside down for me. Uh, okay, I'm working upside down to you, but I'm working right side up for me, okay. So maybe I'll just start with the pure color. I don't have a plan, I just have these colors. I have a, a oh, you know what this is? This is a Janko Green, Janko, J-E-N-K-O. I just got a little thing of it from Golden because I wanted to see if I like it. I don't love it, but I do like it mixed with other things. And so when I mixed it with white and stuff, it's really pretty, okay? And, 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 I, and I might try it with this now to see if I like it. So let me just start out with maybe a pure red. And I'm doing that because I'm thinking it might, it might pick up the, uh, the gesso. So I'm gonna go in hard with the paint to, to begin with harder than I, I normally would. Well, no, I always go in hard. When I'm, I start painting on wood because when I'm painting and I hit the canvas, man, I am pounding it. <laughs> My cat comes running. He's like ready to pounce. He doesn't know what I'm doing. So, all right, so, you know, it's random. This is, this is a crappy brush and it's like all chewed up because I scrub like anything with my stuff. But if you like neater stuff, then you get yourself a nice round pointed um, 
brush and you do it your way. You know, you, you don't have to do it my way. Um, but I'll just show you, I'm just showing you what, what I, what I do. All right, so I don't know what I want to make a combo with that, but I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna see about this. Now let me show you this Janko Green. This Janko Green just by itself is kind of like this. It's dark, you see that? It's really, really dark and it is pretty, all right? And um, you know, maybe I'll, and it is kind of pretty. That's the thing about color theory. I, it could go on forever. Sometimes it, it's not a matter of what you mix it with, it's a matter of what you put it next to. So while some people might find this to be muddy, I find this to be interesting, and I'd like to see how I could balance maybe this muddy um, against some bright, pure colors. But let's just see. It's not gonna be finished. I'm just doing it very, very raw, so you see that I'm, I'm not afraid to just go in and start, start painting. And like I said, I wasn't going to use that color, <laughs> but I'm using it to show you because I know that I can fix it. And that is what's really cool about acrylics. Like they're very, very, very forgiving. And then, you know, I might scrub. So I can mix a little bit on here and see what happens. So then that gives me a really cool gray. You see that? I didn't know that. Now, if I add a little bit of white to that, I'm gonna to have to squirt some white. I don't have white, so I'm gonna probably use that, that thinner white gesso. But uh, yeah, see what happens? It kind of gives you that green gray there. That's kind of neat. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more white in there. What are you doing, Pat? I don't know. We'll find out, that's how we learn. Okay, oh look, that kind of makes like a beige. Am I in camera? I think I'm in camera. Okay, so that's kind of making like a really cool braid. So that's a neat and neutral next to the red and next to that green. But see, I don't care. I'm using the same, the same brush because I don't care if, if the colors mix because um, I know that, um, I mean, we all know that green and red they, they mix their compliments and they mix, but they can make some horrible mud. And that's where um, adding black and white for me comes in because I can just kind of make some really pretty uh, neutrals with it. And um, I don't call them mud, I call them neutrals because if I'm nice to them, then they usually end up being nice to me. But those are kind of some cool colors right there. All right, I'm gonna paint upside down for you for a while because we don't have a lot of time. Let me see if it's in camera. Okay. Okay. So if I get my white, see this is what I have. If I get my white and I add it to my green, like you see, I just take a tad of that green. I can get that really minty color. And that's what I like about the Janko green. Or if I add a little bit of pink to it, then I get like this beige color, which is really cool too, you know, um, in terms of a neutral. And um, yeah, maybe I'll you know, look at that color. Like you can buy that color, but I can make varieties of it by, you know, adding a little bit more red to it so I can have a warmer gray or a cooler gray or a greener gray or a redder gray. But they're all they're all pretty nice. And I don't know if I'm in love with this design, okay? So I'm not really paying design attention. I'm just trying to get paint on here for you to see like how I just started and um, and then you know I start to see different things in it that I want to add and take away and, and I do um, you know uh, don't be afraid of black and don't be afraid of white uh, mix them or use them straight on the page 
but you can usually make some really great darks. So this isn't that thrilling here, but I'm thinking that, that this will be really nice next to that, and I think I'm right. You see how it is next to the gray there? That's kind of nice. And then I had one outlier in here. I had some yellow here. So, cause I wasn't sure if I was gonna like that green. So I thought if I could warm it up and I think that's how I got some of that kind of stuff. But it's not too late to do that. I can go in and do that. And, and those can become like some really fun accent pieces. But right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to claim some space. I'm trying to work uh, out my colors. Learn, I'm learning as I'm working. And I want to play around with shapes and size. All right, so I'm not, I'm not worrying. I'm not going in and starting to do marks like, you know, like a maniac, um, you know, and the marks, the mark making, you know, doesn't have to be in a painting. I mean, if you can nail it, like sometimes this brushwork, it, it, it's, it's beautiful. And it's nice to, to see the brushwork, you know, and you can cut into it and you can make different shapes and mistakes and yada, yada, yada. But they're all, they all teach you something. So then maybe on this edge over here, I'll try to stay off my other pages. Maybe I'll just go straight with that Jenko green and then just see what happens. Not in love with that. But um, I think what I would like to do is make it really light and put some down here. Lighter than that even. And then I'll go in and start, you know, uh, playing around with some doodads and, uh, and dots and scribbles and what have you. Now, so far here, I haven't really allowed any white to show, but I think it's gonna need that. But what I just wanted to do for myself and really to show you is what looks good next to what. Like, I kind of like, see how much white there is in this? I kind of, that is that color down there. I kind of like how that is, you know, next to this next to, you know, what will it be like next to that? What will it be like when it's next to something really, really subtle? So then maybe that will be my, my light and it's not gonna be a pure white. But I can add white at the end. So I need to cross over here because that's the thing about it is, is making this, uh, bridging this gap here. Uh, and, and again, you don't have to use both pages. You can do one page at a time. This one, uh, was my first sketchbook that I just thought I'm gonna go across the across the divide and, and see what happens so all right so that's that's my main event um, what would I like to do I think I'd like to get some really really pale pinks in here what time is it all right we're gonna be cut off in a second um, I'm gonna turn it around so I can see it and um, I'm gonna put a lot more white in here because I wanna get some quick pink. And I think I'm going to add some of that yellow to that pink because it's it's all like really, really cool. So what, what's happening when I add the yellow and the red to the pink is that I'm kind of getting like a sienna color that I think might be nice. Yeah, see? Now that, that starts to give me some accents uh, to work with. And um, and then go about my day. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, not the prettiest now. A lot of people will think it looks like Christmas, but what I'll keep doing is adding tones of things. You know, um, if I mix, you know, uh, make a dark, almost like a black and stuff like that, then then that will start giving me, you know, more more tones. 
which I'll start messing around with and stuff like that. And I'll make the other stuff brighter. Um, if I want to, um, I can always go in with, you know, uh, an, another color. You know, this is my base, but I can get like m much more pure forms of all these colors. Um, but I might decide to go in with some kind of outlier color. And I say outlier because it's not the main, the main thing, you know, like in math. But this is really dirty. That, that's pretty. That dirty. Yeah, that's pretty. I got to find a clean brush. Clean brush. Oh, here's one. I don't think this will work good unless I use a, a more... Um, mm, that seems kind of dirty, too. It's dirty. All right. I have to use my finger, everybody. Because we're going to get cut off. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna to try to use some turquoise in places. All right? I don't have a clean brush, so I'm going to do some finger painting. Now that, just a little bit of that gives me some information, some more information. Do I like it? Do I not like it? You know, how will I respond to it with some of the other colors? No, it doesn't have to be three, three, and three. Um, I would work hard to get rid of that. Um, but also at this point, if you put something in really thick, you can start to scratch out of it and start to get, you know, start to get into some mark making. And then that'll inform, um, you know, what I want to continue to do with my shapes or might need to do with my shapes. Um, and then see, see how they, they scratch in or they don't scratch in. And so that's, that's the process. It's, it can be gunky. It's yours. This is just a pencil, just a mechanical pencil. And uh, I'm going to turn up because I think I'm going to lose you. Okay. So anyway. That's what we have so far. And um, let's see. One minute, 58 seconds. Available. That's better. Okay. And I'm on my way, you know. And now I can sit down, you know, and watch Blue Bloods or something and put some marks in and use some markers and fun stuff like that. And, um, and learn about color, design, art, supplies, paper, gesso, everything. So I just wanna thank you all for watching. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. All right, everybody? Blessings for prosperity. Blessings on your kids going back to school um, for creative ways to educate them and to learn and to use your own sketchbook so you don't lose your mind or even to share that with your kids. But it's real important to feed yourself so that you have something to feed others, okay? And um, remember, it's just paint. Nobody, what? Dies. <laughs> okay. Love you. Bye-bye.